All right, so after learning about Frida Kahlo and self-portraits and after taking your selfies, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy them. So you will all have a piece of transparency paper. It's literally transparent paper. You can see through it. What I would like you to do is line up your transparency paper with the bottom of your actual self-portrait, of your actual picture. You want to make sure every time you draw on the top of your transparency paper that the bottoms are lined up. Okay, if they're not lined up, you're going to be tracing things funny and things are not going to be in the right spot. So I like to just tap it on the table. Every once in a while, just do this. So I'm tap, tap, tap to make sure it's lined up. Now, for this, we are using Sharpie on top of the transparency paper. I've got a fine one for small details and then a normal Sharpie for all the big details. So using my helper hand, I'm going to make sure that my transparency stays in the same spot all the time. Using my fat Sharpie, first thing I want to outline is the outline of myself. So this includes your hair and anything you're doing with your hands or arms. So working right on top, I'm going to trace the outline of my hair, working nice and slow. If you have parts cut off, it's fine. Working nice and slow around the outside of my hair, down my shoulder and down my arm. Then it cuts off, so I'm going to stop. If you have wrinkles in your clothing, follow them. Trace what you see. I see my desk right here. I'm going to trace it. I have the inside of my sleeve with all the wrinkles of my sweater. Trace them how you see them. So just tracing so far like that. So there's my outline. We have a small one over here like that. Next, what I want you to do is your hair. So your hairline. So I'm going to start mine right here going right where I can see that my hair meets my mask and my hair meets my clothing. I have a collar right here. My hair goes up. I have a mask. I'm going to trace the outside of my ear because that's where my hairline is. Like that. And I know my hair comes down here. Tracing, tracing, tracing. My hair is also on this side. You don't have to draw all of your hair strands, but get a general shape of your hair, just like that. We're gonna add value to the hair later. Next, what I want you to work on is your shirt or whatever you're wearing. So I'm gonna start with my sleeve, draw this main line here, and I'm also gonna include the striping of my sleeve So since I have a design on my shirt, I'm gonna copy that too. I'm also gonna copy the lines of my wrinkles. So I have a wrinkle here in my sweater. I have a wrinkle down here. I'm just gonna copy the lines that I see. Then I'm gonna work in the details of my shirt. Perfect, so there's my shirt. Every once in a while too, you can lift your transparency up to see how you're doing. And then when you put it back down, make sure you tap on the table, get it all relined up. And for example, if you can see, if I just slide my transparency to the side, you can see that it's not lined up. You can usually see it. So tap again. Then I'm going to do my mask. So trace what you see. If you have something on your mask that you don't want included, you can just leave it out. So for example, if I didn't want to do the striping of my mask, I would just leave it out. I think it looks nice, so I'm just going to trace it anyways. Completely up to you. You decide if you want to include your mask details. Perfect. So this is the part everyone gets really nervous about. We're going to do our faces trick with the faces is you need to draw what you see, not what you think you see. I'm going to zoom in right on mine. A lot of people want to go in and draw a nose and just do a, a little triangle or go in and draw eyes and do big circles. That's not what they actually are. 
there are a bunch of combo lines put together. So what you wanna do is trace what you actually see, not what you think you see. And this is a good time for you to jump from the skinny marker to the fat marker if you need it. So for example, if I'm doing my eyeball, I see a really dark section in the middle. So I'm gonna trace it and fill it in. Then I see a line that comes over here, a dark line over here. On my eyelid, I see another dark line. And underneath my eye, I also see a line here and a line here. I did not just draw a circle and say, oop, I'm done. Draw what you actually see. I'm gonna do the big details with my big Sharpie, the small details with my skinnier Sharpie. So line here, I see a dark shadow here. I see a really dark shadow here with a line. Perfect, so I'm gonna switch to my thin point to do all the small details. So I see a dark shadow in here. I see my eyelashes, so I'm actually gonna draw them because I see them in the photo. On my bottom lid, I see a small shadow and my eyelashes here, and I see a shadow in here. So I'm just gonna do a line, pretty easy. Same on this side, I see eyelashes, and I actually see them. I see a shadow here, so I'm gonna draw it in. Perfect, there's also a technique called stippling. Stippling is when you make small marks to make it look like there's value. So I'm gonna do stippling on my eyebrows because I can see the small individual hairs. So I'm just gonna do these little marks to make it look like my eyebrow. And I'm just doing it where I can see it. So little stipple marks, just like that. Same on this eyebrow, I can see the individual hairs. Just like that. Every once in a while you can pull it up and double check to make sure it looks good. Make sure it's lined back up. Then I'm gonna zoom back out and we're gonna work on the value in our clothing and in our hair. And what value is, is how dark or how light something is. So. I see dark shadows in my hair up here, and I also see light shadows. So I'm gonna switch back over to my bigger Sharpie, and I'm gonna add them in using a little bit of stippling and a little bit of shading. So I see right here it's dark, it goes light, then it goes dark again. So I'm gonna add in my stipply line marks where it's dark. And it doesn't have to be perfect, because it's just a big old hunk of hair and I'm leaving the light spots. You don't even need to do anything really with the light spots. I see a light spot here and then a dark spot here, so I'm gonna add in the dark spots. Some spots too will be completely black, so make sure you add those in where you see them. Same on this side of my head, I'm leaving the light spots light and I'm adding the dark spots in with that stippling and that line making. Down here it's really dark, so I'm making it really dark. Draw what you see. You can also change the directions of your lines, so I can see that this hair is kind of flicking out, so I'm gonna make those lines flicking out. These ones are going straight down, so I'm gonna make them going straight down. I also see some shadows and shading in my shirt and in my neck, I'm gonna add them in. So I'm gonna do a different type of stippling. I'm just gonna do dot making to add in the shadows here, just to change it up. My collar's pretty dark, so I'm gonna add lines to make it look darker. And then I'm gonna start to work on my shirt. I know my striping is gonna be dark, so I'm gonna add that in. And then I have some shadows throughout that I'm gonna add in as well. So I'll fast forward through this part. Okay, perfect, it looks like I'm about done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off of my actual drawing and compare them, make sure I'm not missing any spots. I know I forgot to do my ear, so I fixed that. And I think I need to add something where my nose is because it looks like I have no nose. So I'm gonna reline it back up, do a small little shadow here. And if there's any spots where you're just like, oh, I messed that up completely, go in and retouch and refix them. 
You'll notice too that I did nothing in the background. Don't worry about the background, even though I have a building. And so once this is done, set it aside and just double check for anything you might need to fix. For our selfie self portrait background, we're gonna be using watercolor and doing a wet into wet technique. So first thing I want you to do is on the smooth side of your watercolor paper, write your name. You're painting on the bumpier side, so this side. What we're gonna do is called a wet into wet technique. And what this is, is putting wet paint onto wet water that's already on your paper. So what I'd like you to do is take your paintbrush and do a wash, just paint clear water on your paper. I know it is hard to see, but just trust this process here. Okay. You're gonna pick whatever colors you want, and then you're gonna drop the color into the water that's already on your paper. So I'm gonna use blue, and I think I'm gonna use purple. Load up your paint on your brush, and just tap the paint into the water that's already on your paper. What's cool is the colors will mix and you can keep dropping in new colors to create this tie-dye effect. So what I want you to do is fill up the entire paper because this is going to go behind your selfie self portrait. So paint that clear water and then drop the paint onto the paper. If you also want to do a controlled splatter, take a little bit of paint on your paintbrush, hold it very close to your paper and gently tap. What you can also do is wait a little bit for your paper to dry so that you can add colors in on top. So I'm gonna wait for my paper to dry a little bit and then I'm also going to tap in the white. Another technique you can also use is taking a paper towel and tapping up to create texture. So I'm just going to tap my paper towel. Perfect, so I got it to a place where I really like it. We're gonna let it dry, and then once it's dry, we're gonna take our portrait and staple it to our dried background. So make sure this goes into the drying rack and we'll put it together next class.